morning, everyone. Welcome to chapel. If you could please open up your hymn books to hymn number 35. Hymn number 35, we will sing all five stanzas. Today is our final Bible reading for Paul's letter to the Romans. Martin Luther wrote in his preface to the book of Romans that it is impossible for this letter to read too much or too well. For in it the Holy Spirit makes it perfectly clear that we are not saved by what we do, but what Christ has done for us. And that is why, juniors, Pastor Hag so deliberately takes you through this blessed book. Before we get to the final chapter, uh, chapter 16, let's review some of the key passages that Paul gives us, beginning with the theme passage found in the first chapter, perhaps the most famous of all of the verses uh, from Romans. In this passage, Paul makes it clear again 
that it is the good news of the gospel that brings salvation to you and to me. We have no other way in which to be saved except through which God has given us in the work of Christ. A couple chapters later, in chapter 3, Paul states the truth about our ability to save ourselves. It cannot be done. We all have sinned and we continually fall short of what God expects of us. But then he immediately reveals how we become right with God. Here Paul uses that courtroom term, justify. For God has declared you and me not guilty of the sins we have done. And we are saved then by what Christ has done to redeem us. He repeats this same idea a few chapters later with one of the first passages that I think I ever had to memorize, and maybe this was one of your first ones too. The wages of sin is death. But God doesn't give us what we earn. He doesn't give us our wages. Rather, he gives us the perfect Christmas gift, something completely free, eternal life. In chapter 8, Paul gets practical. Just because you have eternal life doesn't mean you are free from sorrow or from pain or from guilt. Your lives are not always going to be free and easy. You're going to suffer, and so am I. You are going to hurt, and so am I. We aren't physically in heaven yet, but remember, all of your sufferings, your pains, they don't even compare to what God has in store for you in heaven. God takes both your good days and your bad days, your good times and your bad times, and he makes them serve a greater purpose, to honor him. So, keep the faith. God does not forsake his own. Then perhaps the high point of the book. At the last part of chapter 8, Paul states this verse for our comfort. There is nothing, nothing in heaven or on earth that can separate you, neither good nor bad, from Christ and his love. When you are connected to Christ through faith, that is an unbreakable bond. Nothing can separate you from God's love. Now as we turn to the closing chapter, chapter 16, we are reminded that this is indeed a letter, a letter from a person to people. It's written to real people at a real place at a real time. And so just as you and your letters may give personal news or personal greetings, that's exactly what Paul is doing in this last chapter. He sends greetings to those that he knows personally at Rome. Now, before Jack reads a rather lengthy list of names, I'm going to guess most of them completely unfamiliar, I'd like you to look at the screen. I'm going to have a few slides shown of people that you probably don't know. And it's going to remind us just of how many people there are that you know that I don't or that someone else knows that we don't, who believe the same things that you believe, who hold this book of Romans to be their central guide in salvation. And it will remind us when Paul starts going through this long litany of names that we all have people that we pray for who are on the same road that we are. So, here we have a handsome couple. Uh, If you know who this couple is, and you're part of the plant here, stand up, please. Mr. Thiesfeld. Yes, good. Greet Brother Steve and his wife, Janine. Steve would be from the graduating class of 1970 here at the Winnebago Lutheran Academy. And he was student council president at that time when he was here at WLA. Um, Just think of yourself, 50 years down the road, would you be in such a picture? 
I think that it's rather striking. Um, little did Steve know that he would be teaching for 48 years in our circles and uh, continues to do so even today. Some of you may have seen him on your trip to MLC. Destiny, are you here? Okay. One of my plants didn't work. And we have this gentleman, quite stunning. Who is this? That gentleman is Jerry Hosbach, uh, VP Wrecker, and I would know him better as Mr. H. Um, Mr. H was my fifth grade teacher, my seventh grade teacher, and my eighth grade teacher, and one of the main reasons that I became a teacher. Um, not only was he a very effective teacher, but as you can see from the picture, he had a lot of fun. He made class fun. He made teaching look like a lot of fun. Uh, but more importantly is that he continues to have a passion to share God's word with young people, which he uh, does in the Milwaukee area now. Thank you, Mr. Recker. One to go. Here we have a small tribe of people. Abby? Uh, this is my uncle Bart and my aunt Erica, and they're a family of seven kids, and they live in Washington where my uncle's a pastor. Thank you, Abby. Just like the people on the slides that we don't know, uh, some of us do, we understand that Paul here in chapter 16 knows about these strange named people who are all part of the big body of believers, the communion of saints. So as Jack reads these names, uh, please pay attention to those names, but also think of those friends and relatives of yours that are scattered throughout the United States that walk the same walk of faith that you are and that we include in our prayers so that God keeps them safe. Okay, Jack, have at it. Romans 16. Ooh. I commend you to our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church in Kentria, I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and to give her any help she may need from you, for she has been a great help to many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Epenetus, who is the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, who I, whom I love in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachys. Greet Apelles, tested and approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my relative. Greet those in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work very hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobas, Hermas, and the brothers with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ Jesus, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I am full of joy over you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, sends his greetings to you, as do Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, my relatives. I, Tertius, who wrote down this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here enjoy, sends you his greetings. Aristus, who is the city's director of public works, and our brother Quartus, send you their greetings. 
Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Here ends our reading. Thank you, Jack. If you'd please open up your hymnals, 539. We will close with uh, that hymn, singing just the first three stanzas. Stanzas 1, 2, and 3 of hymn 539. 